Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Karen Go. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 City Council meeting of April 19th, 2017. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Smith. I'm here. Councilmember Rivera. Here. Councilmember Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Weir. Councilmember Sullivan. Here. Councilmember Parlier. Here. Thank you. And welcome to our city council meeting. We have some special guests here tonight. We have uh, Mr. Nicholas Suckup, the sixth grade teacher from Eisler Elementary School, and he's brought with him four of the ASB students. So would you just wave and welcome. We're very glad to have you here as a, an educational experience. And then Bakersfield College, Renegades, where are you? I know you're here for class, so good to see some of you uh, came back. And then CSUB, Roadrunners, thank you and welcome again to our session. Thank you so much for being here and we hope you'll learn a lot today. At this time, we're going to ask you to please stand for the invocation to be offered by Pastor Andy Prince from Grace Baptist Church. And then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance by Natalie Schaefer, who's a sixth grade student and ASB secretary for Eisler Elementary School. So Pastor Andy, go ahead. Let's pray. In your word, Lord, we read, and seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it, for in it, peace, you will have peace. Father, we remember this past weekend where we celebrated your son who came and gave us peace through his death and resurrection. And Lord, we come today and we ask that you would bring peace to our city. Lord, we pray for our mayor, for our council members, Lord, that you would give them wisdom as they make policies. Lord, that the policies that they would choose would be one that would help bring peace to our city. Lord, we pray that you would help them to remember that they are called to be servant leaders. Father, that you would give them a love for all the people of our city. And Lord, that in making the decisions, Lord, that it would be what is best for our people. And Lord, out of the love that they have for them. Lord, we truly thank you for their sacrifice and we thank you for their servant heart to be willing to give the time that they do to serve as servant leaders for us in our city. Lord, we thank you for your provision. God, we pray that you would give us safety, that you would bring jobs to Bakersfield, that you would give us strong families. Lord, we pray that you would give us good education and good health care. Lord, we thank you for all the city workers that work behind the scenes, that work so hard and tirelessly to help our city to become stronger and better. Lord, we thank you for the rain that you have given us over this past year. And Lord, the blessing that it has been. And Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. And Lord, we pray for your hand to continue to be upon our city. Lord, I pray that you would help us to live by our motto. In God we trust. And Lord, knowing if we'll do that, that there will be peace in our city. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Natalie. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. Pastor Andy, thank you so much for the leadership that you're providing for our community. I know that you're a leader in bringing uh, various faith groups together to work on community transformation, and we very much appreciate that. Natalie, thank you very much for being a student representative of our schools, and we appreciate uh, 
Mr. Nick, uh, very, very much, Mr. Suckett, and uh, thank you so much for bringing students here to learn about their civic responsibility. So we welcome you, and thank you very, very much again for being here today. Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We request that you turn off your phones, and in keeping with council's policy, council members aren't allowed to send or receive electronic communications during the meeting. We ask that you be courteous in the use of cameras and videos. Applause is allowed during the presentation portion of the meeting, but it isn't allowed during the other times of the meeting. For safety reasons and as a courtesy to others, no signs are allowed in the council chambers. We thank you for your cooperation. Madam Clerk, would you please read the first item? Under presentations, we have a proclamation to Carlos Bello, Chairman of the Asthma Coalition of Kern County, declaring May 2017 Asthma Awareness Month. With me today, I have uh, Mr. Carlos Bello, and we thank you so much for being here. Asthma is a challenge in our community, and we very, very much appreciate your work. I'm going to read a proclamation. Whereas asthma is a long-term inflammatory disease in which airways of the lungs constrict, whereas asthma prevalence in Kern County is the highest incidence in the state with more than one in six people affected, and whereas asthma is one of the top causes of absences in the Bakersfield City School District, and whereas asthma causes more than 5,600 emergency department visits and 740 hospitalizations each year in Kern County, now therefore I, Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, do hereby proclaim May 2017 as Asthma Awareness Month in our city and urge all residents to educate themselves about asthma and work to reduce exposure to environmental triggers at home, in schools, and at work. And that's dated Bakersville, California, this 19th day of April 2017, signed by the mayor of the city of Bakersfield. And it's my honor now to present this proclamation to you and invite you to say a few words. Hi, um, uh, I'm the chairman of the Asthma Coalition, um, Carlos Bale, and I also wanted to uh, introduce Eleanor Duran. She's the executive director of the Asthma Coalition. I want you to become familiar with her because she's the one really doing most of the hard work for us. It really helps to have someone uh, be able to, to do all that. I'm, I'm part of the officers of the Asthma Coalition, so we kind of provide oversight, but um, Thank you. I, I'll go ahead and say a few more uh, words. I wanted to share a, a vision briefly um, that hopefully you, you, I want to encourage you to share this um, with all the, the folks in your professional uh, and personal lives that asthma um, is a public health issue that requires a lot of coordination and collaboration and it, it requires a lot of partners working together to address all the multiple factors that impact asthma. Um, there's air quality, of course, there's indoor air quality, there's a health care issue, there's schools and how they manage asthma, there's workplace issues. So there's a lot of things that every one of us can do um, to, to make an impact on that. And so, you know, Mayor Goat, uh, th thanks for mentioning all the statistics and, and provide some um, information about that. And it's, it's really important to be aware that it does uh, it disproportionately affect um, uh, low-income communities, communities of color. So that's why it requires all of us to, to really work together and, and really share that vision. And it's really amazing how, how few people have asthma action plans in current counts. One of the, our goals is to increase the number of people that do complete those. And so a lot of doctors aren't doing that. There's a number of issues we won't go into that, that, that are the cause of that. But there are things like spacers, peak flow meters. So these are things you may not be um, familiar with if you don't have asthma. But for those of you that are, do have asthma, it's something that we really want to encourage more people to, to use. So, um, I, and I, I wanted to mention a few events that we're doing. Uh, well, first of all, May 3rd is asthma, um, World Asthma Day. So if you would like to um, commemorate or, or um, I guess, increase awareness about that in your organization or in your community, feel free to reach out to me or to Eleanor, and, uh, and then we can help you um, give you some materials and resources to do that, to, 
and we, we'd be happy to, to go give a little talk at, at your organization if you'd like to. Um, one of the events that, um, well, a few events I want to mention is that on uh, April 27th, um, the, um, the American Lung Association, one of our um, asthma coalition members is going to have the Better Breather Symposium at, at a Memorial Hospital at Founders Hall. So we encourage you to go. It's going to be 10 to, I think, 3 p.m. And uh, so that's going to feature information about lung disease, and they're going to cover asthma. Um, and um, there's also going to be the uh, asthma symposium, another asthma symposium that we're planning separately, and it's going to be May 22nd. And we're going to feature uh, a couple panels with guest speakers to cover asthma financing, uh, home asthma education, and uh, indoor um, trigger management, and school health and asthma management. And uh, there's another, uh, there's a few other workshops that our, our partners are offering, one on May 11th uh, by Dignity Health. It's a community asthma workshop open to anybody. A bilingual, and then the Kern Family Healthcare, they're offering a few workshops in May. The, uh, one, uh, the first one's coming up May 12th at Williams School. So um, I encourage you to approach us if you have any questions about getting involved or, um, or increasing awareness about asthma. So it's really an issue that I think a lot of people still don't quite understand how to manage, even though that there's a lot of knowledge and simple ways to do it. And a lot of people think they know how to manage it, but you know, we, we want to you know, help remind people and make sure they're, they're caught up or, or, or remembers important things about managing now. So I think that's, that's it. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next item, please. Presentation of a proclamation to Mark Roy, Managing Attorney, Greater Bakersfield Legal Assistance, Fair Housing Law Project, declaring April 2017 Fair Housing Month. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here, uh, for being part of the uh, GBLA representative. Uh, we always appreciate the good work that the organization is doing. And it is my pleasure today to read to you this proclamation from the mayor of the city of Bakersfield. Whereas April 11, 2017 marks the 49th anniversary of the passage of the U.S. Fair Housing Law, which prohibits discrimination in housing on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or family status, and whereas the California Fair Employment and Housing Act extends fair housing protection to also prohibit discrimination on the basis of marital status, ancestry, sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, medical condition, or source of income, and equality of opportunity for all is fundamental policy of this nation, state, and municipality. And whereas ongoing education, outreach, and monitoring are key to raising awareness of fair housing principles, practices, rights, and responsibilities, and the city of Bakersfield continues to affirmatively further fair housing for its residents, now, therefore, I, Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, do hereby proclaim April 2017 as Fair Housing Month in our city and encourage all residents, agencies, institutions, public and private, to abide by the letter and spirit of the Fair Housing Act and Fair Employment and Housing Act. It's dated in Bakersfield, California, this 19th day of April 2017, it's signed by Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield. It's my honor to present to you this proclamation. Thank you very much. Come and say a few words. All right. Introduce. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mayor Go, uh, Council members. I'm Mark Roy, the Managing Attorney at Greater Bakersfield Legal Assistance's Fair Housing Law Project, and I'm here with Victoria Limbian, our Fair Housing Outreach and Education Coordinator. Uh, we are pleased that the city has declared April to be Fair Housing Month, and we look forward to continuing our collaboration with the city, with the county, with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to assure that every person that lives in Bakersfield and Kern County has an equal opportunity to have access and to use and enjoy their housing. Uh, <clears throat> we're pleased to announce that we have a 
Fair Housing Conference, the fifth annual GBLA Fair Housing Conference, scheduled uh, next Thursday, April 27th, at the Junior League of Bakersfield here in town. We're looking forward to presenters uh, talking about uh, the basics of fair housing and talking about how those opportunities can be made real to the people who live and work and experience Bakersfield as we all do. Uh, we'd have some flyers that we will leave uh, somewhere in the back for people that are attending this evening and we are welcome uh, anyone that wants to call, attend our free conference, you get a lunch and you'll learn a lot about equal housing opportunity. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next item, please. Presentation of a proclamation to Shannon Vernon, Garden Pathways Director of Childhood Education, declaring April 24th through the 28th, 2017, Week of the Young Child. Hello. Welcome. Early childhood education, we know how important it is in shaping the future of our youth and uh, the future of their success in their career. And it's our privilege today to have Shannon Vernon, who, in addition to being the Director of Childhood Education for Garden Pathways, also is a Director Mentor for California, and she provides resources and expertise to new directors and experienced directors who are facing challenges. And so it is my privilege to present this proclamation, whereas Garden Pathways and other local organizations are joining with the National Association for the Education of Young Children to celebrate the Week of the Young Child, and whereas these organizations are working to improve early learning opportunities, including early literacy programs that can provide the foundation for learning, and whereas teachers and others who make a difference in the lives of young children deserve thanks and recognition, and whereas public policies that support early learning for young children are crucial to their future successes. Now, therefore, I, Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, do hereby proclaim April 24th through April 28th, 2017, as week of the young child in our city, and encourage all citizens to join in recognizing and commending the local organizations and individuals striving to lay the foundations, paving the way to success for local children. It's dated at Bakersfield, California, this 19th day of April 2017, signed by Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield. It's my honor to present this to you and invite you to say a few words and introduce. <coughs> Um, Honorable Mayor and City Council members, thank you so much for proclaiming April 24th through 28th as the Week of the Young Child. My name is Shannon Vernon and I am the Director of Childhood Education for Garden Pathways and I brought with me Lydia Pierce and she is the Director of Blanton Child Development Center, one of our partner centers working really hard to bring extra care to the zero to three year old population in our community. It's my privilege to accept this proclamation on behalf of Garden Pathways Downtown Education Center, the children of Bakersfield, and the families and professionals who make a difference in their lives. All young children need and deserve high quality early learning experiences that will prepare them for life. Early childhood education is one of the best investments our community can make. Research shows that providing high quality education for children before they turn five yields significant long-term benefits. Young people in preschool programs are more likely to graduate from high school, to own homes, and to have longer marriages. Children in quality preschool programs are less likely to repeat grades, to need special education, or to get into further or future trouble with the law. The High Scope Perry Preschool Study found that children who were enrolled in a quality preschool program ultimately earned up to $2,000 more per month than those who were not. Week of the Young Child is a time to recognize that early years are learning years for all young children. At Garden Pathways Downtown Education Center, we'll be celebrating with a week full of events based around music, nutrition, science, technology, engineering, arts, math, and family fun. 
We call upon our community of Bakersfield to do our part to help young children. Thank you again for recognizing the importance of early learning and early literacy and celebrating the teachers and policies that bring early childhood education to young children. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item, please. Public statements. Public presentations. At this time, we'll receive public statements. All statements are given a three-minute time limit, 15 minutes per topic. And if you are making a public statement, uh, we would ask you to come forward at this time and just sit in the front row so uh, we can conserve our time. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, you can give them to the clerk, and she'll give copies to the council. We ask that you avoid any behavior that disrupts the meeting. We're very interested and concerned with your issues, but due to, the, Brown, due to uh, the public notice requirements of the Brown Act, the council can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. The council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request staff to contact you. Madam Clerk, would you please call the first public speaker? We have four public speakers this evening. Each speaker will be discussing a separate subject. Our first speaker is Marvin Dean regarding local funding and high-speed rail. Good evening. Please introduce yourself. And go ahead. Excuse me. <clears throat> My name is Marvin Dean. I'm here representing the Current Minority Contractors Association. I'm here to make an announcement, make a request, and uh, invite you. And then I've got to leave. I've got to go to Sacramento tonight and be back here tomorrow. So I don't know I'm going to do all this. That's why I want this high speed rail train built because of the much deal I'm dealing with. Okay, again, the reason I'm here, I gave you a handout. Let me just go through the handout and get through the chase. I'm not going to read my statement. You have it there in front of you. Uh, as, as we all know, the legislature and the governor uh, create something called SB1, which is going to create $5 million a year for transportation funding. And we're just waiting for the governor to sign it. The author of the bill is Senator Jim uh, Bean out of San Jose, and he contacted our office, because we've been trying to get him for a conference here for some time. He contacted our office uh, last Thursday, that's the reason I'm here, Wednesday, to confirm that he's coming to our community to be the first stop since that bill has been signed. And he's going to be our keynote speaker. And we're going to be talking about SB, SB, uh, SB1 funding opportunity and how communities can tie into it. I'm going to have Kern Cog, and I'm inviting the city and also the county to come in and talk about some of our local projects in the queue and some of our needs before he speaks so you can see what's happening here in the city and the county. And then they also tucked into that bill, which is very interesting to us, is $5 million a year for a pre-apprenticeship for a workforce investment like ETR to get these guys ready, trained to work on these infrastructure projects. And our, we have a construction boot camp, so we want to talk about how we might be able to get ourselves in position to get some of that money before everybody else knows about it. So we're going to be talking offline on that. Uh, in the morning, it's, uh, it's going to be a full-blown free event in the morning from 8 to noon about high-speed rail jobs, contracting, a uh, video of the construction that's taking place and what opportunities are and all that. That's going to be at the Marriott from 8 to noon. And then the private session and the event we're going to have for the center there is going to be a, a lunch involved, so we're asking people to pay for that event. And we're also setting up right after that a VIP meet and greet where we can try to help facilitate our community transportation folks to meet with him, break bread with him, 
and talk about some of the local issues because irrespective of what we think about it, the money's going to be spent. And we didn't get a vote, and I think it's amazing, we didn't get a vote out of this valley, and he's going to be here to speak to us first. So I think it would be a good opportunity, and because he chairs the housing and transportation, I'm asking transportation folks and housing folks to be there. So that's why all the information you have there is before you. His bio's there, the, the, the afternoon session is there, and then the last item is kind of an overview of the entire day of the entire program. So I'm going to excuse myself and just say I'm hoping that the city uh, 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 transportation Department through Nick or his de uh, designee and also Jackie through her designee for housing to be able to attend and I've asked Vice Mayor uh, to also uh, to come in and make a few remarks. So that's it and hopefully we'll see somebody there because if we don't fight for it folks or we don't advocate for it then other communities are standing in line for this money. So that's our concern and we're nonpartisan. My only concern is jobs and contracts for this county and this city where I live. That's the only reason we're doing this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Mona Sidhu regarding hate crimes. Good evening. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. My name is Mona Sidhu, S-I-D-H-U. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Um, I was here a couple of weeks ago speaking about my concerns about the public discourse on hate crimes in this community and I continue to be concerned about the public discourse or the lack of public discourse or the inappropriate public discourse that occurs around hate crimes in this community. Uh, the most recent event that has caused me concern was on April 4th at the Board of Supervisors where an organization that was here a few weeks ago getting a proclamation declaring this uh, Sikh Appreciation Month was receiving a similar proclamation at the Board of Supervisors and at that time one of the members of the organization uh, said to the board that these are challenging times that hate crimes have been committed against Sikhs but, not, but none here in Bakersfield thankfully or in Kern County. Uh, even by using the most strictest definition of what we would want to call a hate crime, where there's an arrest, a prosecution, and a conviction, that statement is simply not true. Um, I am disturbed that statements denying the existence of a problem are made in public spaces by individuals, in this case, somebody who was speaking in his private capacity, but is also an attorney with the county council. That does not send a good message to the community. The, Madam Mayor, you were present at that meeting and um, I ran into you after the meeting and I approached you. I was still very frustrated by the comment that had been made. It, it is impossible to describe how appalled one feels when one hears the dismissive nature of such comments about the problems that our community is facing. I approached you after the meeting and, and it was a rhetorical question. I didn't expect you to have an answer and I asked why would he say something like that and your response was eminently fair. You said you didn't know that I should ask the person who made the statement. Fair enough. I don't have a relationship with that person, either personal or professional, and I don't intend to approach him. But I think as mayor of a city where you are fully aware of a hate crime that has occurred and of other incidences, that you should pursue finding out why such statements are being made. And I would urge all council members, all elected officials, all members of government, when you hear a statement being made that dismisses, that denies a problem, that minimizes a problem, to please speak up. At the very least, refute known facts if you are not able to denounce the statement at that time. And I think it's very important to do that because if we can't have an open and honest discussion about the problem, we will never reach a solution. Thank you, Mr. Dew. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. David Dooley, regarding advancing parenting. Welcome, please introduce yourself and go ahead. Mayor Go and members of the City Council, my name is David Dooley. I'm the founder and president of Advancing Parenting. It's a local 
nonprofit. It's been in existence since 2012. We do child abuse prevention, but and specifically what we do is parenting education, but we do not have classes. We do not offer parenting classes. In fact, we don't even interact with parents. What we do is we find interesting and different ways to get quality parenting information out to the community. We compiled a list of 50 parenting behaviors and practices generally recognized as supporting the healthy development of children. And then we put them out in public. We put them on windows of stores and restaurants and businesses and vehicles and billboards when we have the money. The ones on vehicles are extraordinarily effective. A vehicle with a parenting tip on it, that tip is going to get read thousands and thousands of times just being dr driven around the county. My request of the council is that uh, the city be permitted to put parenting tips <clears throat> on city, excuse me, on city vehicles. This request was made previously. Council for the city brought up some issues. One was that it might open up the city to lawsuits. Someone, some group may take offense at, the, at a particular parenting tip and bring suit against the city. Also, city council um, brought up the issue that other organizations may uh, want their stickers put on vehicles. I'd like to address those two issues. For the last two years, um, Head Start has had a parenting tip on about 12 of their vehicles. North of the River Parks and Recreation District has had parenting tips on um, a similar number of vehicles. Consolidated Transportation Services uh, of Bakersfield has a parenting tip on every one of their shuttles. Golden Empire Transit has a parenting tip on every one of the white buses. Not the blue ones, but the white ones. Housing Authority of Kern County, they have a fleet of about 60 vehicles. They have a tip on, on theirs. There have been no complaints, no lawsuits, much positive feedback, and no other organizations have come forward to request um, a similar favor. Mr. Dooley, thank you. Uh, your time's up. You can just go ahead and bring your statements to a close, please. That's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Dooley. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. David Lyman regarding the art trek. Good evening, welcome, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members, I'm David Lyman with Visit Bakersfield. Good evening. I am delighted to unveil for you tonight our latest effort to spotlight some of the best of Bakersfield. The first ever comprehensive inventory of downtown public art and art galleries. We call it Art Trek, a walking tour of downtown public art. Like our other efforts at Visit Bakersfield, Art Trek was developed in response to questions we received from visitors in our office. In this instance, it was, where can we go see public art? Now, the terms public art and downtown Bakersfield have rarely been used in the same sentence. Until now, with Art Trek, we've ident identified almost 100, that's almost 100, paintings, sculptures, murals, painted signal boxes, and art galleries in downtown Bakersfield. Studies have shown that art is an economic driver. The thought behind Art Trek is not just to bring people downtown, but it's to get them to stay downtown. The greater the amount of time they're staying downtown, the greater the, amount, the, greater the chance that they will 
Yes, spend their money. Art Trek is a collaborative effort with the Arts Council of Kern, and I'd like to thank Mr. David Gordon, the Executive Director of the Arts Council, for his assistance in developing Art Trek. The Art Trek brochure was funded by a grant from the Bakersfield Californian Foundation, and no public funds were used in the production of the brochure. As I mentioned, this is the public debut of the Art Trek brochure, and in the next week or two, it will start appearing throughout our city at Bakersfield Hotels, RV parks, attractions, amenities, the Amtrak station, and art galleries, and also at the Arts Council. But it will be available beginning tomorrow morning at our office at Visit Bakersfield 515 Truxton Avenue, right in front of the Amtrak station. And it will also be available online at our website, visitbakersfield.com forward slash art trek. That's A-R-T-T-R-E-K. So I invite each of you to come out and experience art trek. It's just one more way that we can show that in Bakersfield there really is more to explore. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lyman. I'm ready to go on an art trek. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Under workshops, we have a presentation by California Water Service Company, Cal Water, regarding authority to establish its authorized cost of capital filing with the California Public Utilities Commission. Mr. Tandy. Mr. Tellia will make the introduction. Good evening, Mayor Go, members of the council, Steve Tellia, city manager's office. Uh, consistent with the city's franchise with California Water Service Company, uh, representatives of Cal Water are here tonight to provide a workshop on a recent filing that they submitted to the California Public Utilities Commission related to a uh, rate, uh, uh, related to an issue that may have impact on their rates here in Bakersfield. So um, with that, I will turn it over to Greg Millman with Cal Water, who has a short presentation and is here to answer any questions that you may have. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Greg Milliman. I'm Director of Operations with California Water Service Company. I've come to you before. And so it's a pleasure to be back here. Thank you for ha having us and me. Um, today, we're going to talk to you briefly about uh, this year's cost of capital application filing and hopefully explain what that is, an update on our drought recovery expenses, and also talking about a, li a little on our lead testing in schools program that is underway with the school districts. So to start with, CalWater's mission is to deliver a, a reliable, safe, um, water service to our customers here in Bakersfield. And we've, this is a mission that we have been completing successfully for almost over 90 years. The cost of capital proceeding at the California Public Utility Commission is a critical component to maintaining that standard of quality that our Bakersfield customers expect and deserve. This year's cost of capital would take, the, would take effect January 1st, 2018, pending con approval by the commission. Based on the average water use, the typical custom, residential customer in Bakersfield might see um, a, no, that's okay, that's fine, uh, would see approximately a 65 per, uh, cent increase per month depending on their usage. The cost of capital application that we filed um, early April 2017 reflects financing costs for future projects, included, including those approved in the most recent general rate case that the city was part of. These projects are such as replacing aging and high-risk water mains, converting flat services to meter services as required by state law, adding a generator and replacing uh, treatment filters, pumps, and compressors on our Northwest, water, our northwest um, water surface treatment plant, and constructing three additional groundwater wells. Having stated the above, I want to be clear that the cost of capital proceeding does not review or approve capital projects. Those projects were reviewed and authorized by the com in the company's last general rate case, which the, the, was approved by the commission in December 2016. Instead, the cost of this cost of capital proceeding only reviews any proposed changes to the financing of those projects. Cost of capital is, is the amount CalWater is permitted to include in our water rates to cover the long-term debt and return to shareholders for investment in our infrastructure. 
all utilities, whether in municipalities or investor-owned utilities like Cal Water, must pay their financing costs. Further, investor-owned utilities are regulated by the, the California Public Utility Commission to ensure that the opportunity to earn a return on our investment is reasonable. CalWater has calculated the cost of capital level it believes necessary to secure, <coughs> excuse me, to secure the capital needed to fund infrastructure improvements in Bakersfield and other districts that provide customers with a safe, reliable supply of water, such as water mains, wells, pumping stations, tanks, treatment facilities, and all of these needed to comply with water quality standards and to deliver a dependable supply of water. By allowing CalWater to maintain a strong financial rating, <coughs> the company's proposal also reduces other financing costs and better enables CalWater to secure loans necessary for system improvements. The rate of return in our cost of capital application is 8 point, I'm, I'm behind. There's our projects, I apologize. There's, there's the slide after. Um, the rate of return in our cost of capital <laughs> application is 8.31%, comprising 10.75 return on shareholder equity and a 5.51% cost of debt. 5.51% 5 .1, 5 cost of debt. For Bakersfield, this means, as I said earlier, uh, up to a 65 cent increase on a typical customer monthly bill. For sake of comparison, the current commission approved rate of return is 7.94%. While these rate of returns were set by the commission in those previous cap cost of capital proceedings, there is no guarantee that the company could actually achieve those rates. In reality, the cost of capital rates are the maximum amount the company could achieve. In essence, they are a cap, a cap that CalWater cannot exceed. The next step in this process is for the Commission's Office of Ratepayer Advocates to review the cost of capital application and submit its independent analysis and recommendations for the Commission's consideration. The Commission's final decision may differ from, the, from CalWater's proposal and, and that would be in, in the final decision. I'm going to turn it over to Mike Mars, our Bakersfield New District Manager, which I know many of you have already met. He's going to talk to you a little bit about a couple other matters, and then we'll circle back for any questions. There you go. Super. Thanks, Greg. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Again, uh, my name is Mike Morris. I am the district manager for Cal Water in Bakersfield. Uh, last year, Greg Milliman came to tell you about some drought-related expenditures for 2014 and 2015, and told you that we would come back to update you about 2016 and 2017. So I'd like to briefly provide that information. This thing's slipping down here, here we go. All told, uh, Cal Water's drought response plan was successful. You saw some figures about that last year, uh, but here are our updated numbers from January 2016 to March 2017. Our customers in Bakersfield saved more than 6.8 billion gallons of water a 24% reduction. Oops. Which you can do right or left click on it. Thank you. So in order to achieve uh, those savings, we continued our comprehensive customer first plan designed to provide people with the tools and information needed to meet the mandates imposed by the state. For example, in 2016, we aired more than 2,767 TV and cable spots and more than 93,744 movie theater spots about the drought and Cal Water's industry-leading water conservation program. Oh, you're on it, thank you. Uh, again, it is because of these efforts that we are able to help save over 6.8 billion gallons of water or reduction in use of water of 24% over the same period in 2013. As we told you last year, most of the 2014 and 15 expenditures came in the second half of 2015. And most of the 2016 and 2017 expenditures came in the first part of 2016. The approved 2014-15 expenditures were being recouped this year. That charge will end with the end of this calendar year if we receive approval from the commission. For the final phase, uh, we will have the opportunity to recover any approved 2016 expenditures in 2018. 
While we don't have the final numbers uh, for 2016-17, expenditures, the net bill effect to our customers is not likely to be significant. If our filing at the commission does not get delayed, one charge will lapse at the end of 2017 and would be replaced with another for 12 months. At the end of 2018, that charge would end. As we noted last year, Cal Water standard rates reflect the actual cost of providing safe and reliable water to our customers. We do not have a reserve fund, <coughs> excuse me, a reserve fund upon which we can draw on when unpredictable events rise, like the governor's a April 2015 executive order and ensuing regulations from the State Water Resources Control Board. When these types of unpredictable events do arise, the expenses Cal Water incurs are tracked in a separate account and then reviewed by the public, excuse me, the California Public Utilities Commission to determine if they are justified and reasonable bef bef <coughs> before allowing rate recovery. I'm not sure why this thing keeps going in and out, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this summer, Cal Water expects to request that the commission request that the commission to review the expenses it incurred in 2016-2017 in responding to the drought and the emergency regulations adopted by the State Water Resources Control Board. If the commission determines that these expenses are prudent and justified, drought expense recovery charges would continue into 2018, similar to the charges customers have seen in 2017. All told, our drought response expenses amount to about less, actually a little less than one one hundredth of a penny for each gallon of water saved in Bakersfield, around what was in 2014-15. So my next topic is uh, a little update on lead testing in schools. Uh, this year, the State Water Resources Control Board began a program requiring water purveyors and school districts to work together to test the water in our schools for lead. Cal Water has partnered with current school districts and, the, and Bakersfield is the first region in which Cal Water has begun helping implement this program. We have begun working at Kern High School District sites, and we will be working with all schools within our Bakersfield Service District to help them meet this 2019 uh, timeline. In conclusion, um, the Council specifically asked us to open lines of communication. The franchise agreement has helped us, <coughs> has helped with that, but we have also taken um, just direct actions to open these uh, conversations and do our best to inform uh, the council and our customers in advance about what they will be seeing on their bills. Uh, we look forward to continuing our partnership with the city and we welcome more of these conversations to keep our customers and local leaders informed. Uh, thank you. Can you open up to questions or? Thank you very much. Council Member Rivera. You had to have known you to get questions, or at least I hope you came prepared <laughs> to answer them. Um, I want to thank you both for coming. I, I feel, feel that anytime Cal Water's in front of, uh, of our council, um, you folks I understand are message bearers, and, and so I, I've said this last year and I'll say it again. This is obviously not a reflection on your performance or um, certainly not the service we get in Bakersfield, but I continue to take issue with um, how Cal Water operates and, and how it works with the Public Utilities Commission. So I've got a few questions I, I want to delve into with you. Um, the first is, could you tell me what the totality of the rate increases would be based on uh, what the Public Utilities Commission approved in December of 2016? So what's the effective increase Cal or your customers rather will realize in Bakersfield over the course of the next three years? Um, I don't have that for the next three years, but what one of the things we wanted to do, and we've met with uh, several of the council members already to go through that, was to address your concern about just how many, what are all these rate increases and what's happening. So what we did is we took a look at what the rate was as of March 1st, and then we looked at the changes that were going to be made all the way through January 1st, 2018. And we picked January, <clears throat> I picked January 1st, 2018, because that would be the effective date of this cost of capital filing. So I wanted to capture everything. And during that course of time, 
that what the bill, the average customer bill would increase by $3 during that course of time. It is comprised of primarily three things. One is um, this cost of capital proceeding, which is about 65 cents. Another is um, what's referred to it is the second year of the rate, in, rate case increase of $2.10. And then the remainder, 25 cents, is uh, multiple miscellaneous filings associated with items that the commission would like you to track outside of the general rate. In regards to the largest chunk of that, the, the $2.10 piece, which um, it has a test that the utility must pass in order to implement that increase. And we make a filing with the commission in October 15. We will make a filing with the commission on October 15 of this year to show if we have passed that test or not and to send out a notice on that additional increase. Okay. So does that $3 average increase over the course of March 1st and January 1st, is that March 1st, 2017? March, we, we could actually call it January 1, 2017 to January okay. 1, 2018. Does, does that, the, that third item, the additional miscellaneous items, would that include uh, drought response cost recovery? Yes. Okay, so that, that's folded into the $3. Yes. So there is nothing else above the $3 average in, in increases granted by the PUC that would be reflected in January 1, 2017 through January 1, 2018? There are none at this time. Okay. I, I, I need to put that caveat in I, case something no. comes up, but we were very thorough. Okay. So uh, can we talk a little bit about, I, I, heard, I heard you mention that this is a part, well, this is an amendment uh, to your financing plan, which was a part of the general rate case reviewed last year, or at least over the last year and a half. What, why the changes? What, what, what changed and um, why, is, why, why do you need 65 more cents? Okay, uh, two things. Um, the general rate case takes the adopted cost of capital number from a separate proceeding and, and applies it to it. It does, the rate case does not look at the cost of capital proceeding. So we're doing this separate cost of capital proceeding and whatever the number turns out to be in the next rate case Calwater files, that number will, will go into there. Well, it will actually go into 2018, 19, and then the next rate case will be for 2020. So it will just carry into there. The commission decided roughly eight years ago to split the cost of capital element out of the general rate case proceeding and handle it as its own separate proceeding. Okay, so I don't understand then what, what was the financing plan component then to the general rate case? The, the general rate case had nothing to do then with your capital improvements now. Um, the general rate case uh, identified and approved the capital improvements, but it did not approve the rate to finance them at. So think about it this way. If you were to go out and buy a house, you would decide which home you want, and then you would go to a bank and ask for a loan, and the, they would give you a, an interest rate on your loan. That's what we're talking about here in this proceeding, just what the, the rate on whether if you're a lender, it would be the interest rate. If you're an equity investor, it'd be the return on equity. But, but whatever entity is going to provide us funds to construct the capital, what return is appropriate and fair for those providers of fund to get in return? Seems odd if you're going to buy a house and you qualify for a mortgage and you get the mortgage to then go back to the bank and ask for $30,000 more dollars. Which is, what, I mean, that's, it, it seems to me that that's, that's what is effectively occurring now. Uh, to put it, as I mentioned, that our average, to, these numbers aren't right, but it's for example purposes. But our, our, our debt, assume that at the time of, our, of you buying that house, you had in your water rates a 4% interest rate. 
but then you went to the bank and they told you, no, it's going to be 5.51%, then you would need to reflect that increase into what your water rate would be. And, and that's, that's what the 65 cents is. Okay. Do you, do, you have, do you folks have intentions of, well, you do, I heard you say it. Um, you do intend to come back to the Public Utilities Commission for additional drought recovery costs at some point over the course of the next few years. I think I heard you say that it's going to stretch into 2018. Is that correct? The plan is to go in, into the summer once the numbers are finalized and we're anticipating the state. The governor's executive order declared the drought over and the State Water Resources Board, we anticipate shortly thereafter to, to declare it over as well, and, and the drought effectively will all be done. So what we, we plan on accumulating and reviewing and scrubbing the numbers that we've incurred for the past, since um, for 2016 and through 2017 to date, and using those numbers and making a file this, filing this summer, and it would be time to if approved as accepted, it would be time to go in effect right when the existing drought surcharge goes off to have the least impact to the customers. And that existing drought surcharge, just to confirm, is a part of the $3 average number you mentioned earlier. The $3 average is, well, um, the, the change you talked about, because the $3 is, is the change, the increase over the, the next 12 months. It, it, Will be, it is reflected in there, yes. There's one coming off and one coming on. And again, that's why we're anticipating it becoming effective January 1, 2018. And again, that's why I picked the January 1 date. Okay. I have a question for um, city staff. Could you folks tell me how much the city has recovered thus far in uh, drought recovery costs associated with whatever we did to either educate folks on the drought or, um, I don't know, implement conservation measures or whatever we might have done, how much of that money did, did we get back from someone? Does that make sense? Did we recover that from customers? Did we get money from the state? Did a little elf show up with a pocket of gold or a bowl of gold, or did we not get any of that money back? Councilmember Rivera, we absorbed those costs into our existing rate structure. Okay. So, you know, this is, this is a perpetual frustration of mine and really more of a reflection of the, of the PUC and how it functions. You know, the, the, the fact that we, we sit here and we talk about shareholder equity, we talk about ensuring these strong financial ratings of Cal Water, um, and all of those things fall on your customers, it becomes their responsibility rather than, say, for example, Cal Waters, if it were functioning as a normal private business, um, not under the auspices, I think, of a, of a government-supported uh, um, utility. It just it doesn't seem fair. And so as, as a council member represents a large component of folks who are served by Cal Water, who also also tend to be um, far less affluent than uh, the customers who are served by the city of Bakersfield. It frustrates me that time and time and time and time and time again, uh, there's a rate increase. And it's, it's 65 cents or it's $3. You guys will, I'm assuming, are, have already begun work on your next general rate case um, for uh, the next three years and what those rate increases will look like. It frustrates me that there, there's really no end. Um, one, I don't see a ceiling being reached. Um, certainly, I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, couldn't point to an instance where relief has actually occurred on, on the rate front. Maybe, maybe that has happened in the last few years. But you reach a point because the PUC allows you to get this, and then you ask for a little bit more. Um, and that frustrates me. And then effectively, $3 over the course of January 1, 2017 to January 1, 2018, ends up being $9. Um, 
by the end of 2019 and by the end of 2020 it ends up being $20 or whatever it is. Um, that frustrates me. Um, and, and I don't blame you. You guys are operating within the parameters of, of a utility and, and that's how it works in California. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's fair. I'm curious if staff is in a position to answer this question. What, what type of um, activity can we embark on as, um, as uh, CalWater moves forward with this, this particular request? Mayor, Councilman uh, Rivera, we can do the same thing that the council directed staff to do previously, and that is to intervene uh, in, the, in the case and see if we can get any relief. Okay. It's, it's, it seems like we should just have a standing letter at the PUC saying whatever you guys get um, really is, is, is not equitable to uh, the customers in this particular area. But I, I think it's worth exploring and I'm certainly interested in what um, the rest of the council has to say. Um, but I think that's, that's an option that should be on the table. Um, it was an option we exercised during the last general rate case. I think there was uh, some effectiveness to our involvement, certainly in the reduction of, of the increases. If I recall correctly, CalWater started at over 20% um, worth of increases um, over three years, and, and you got far less. Um, and, and certainly, getting far less means you have to move things around, you have to figure out how to adjust, you have to operate differently, and any good business does that on a daily basis, and I think you guys should too. Um, so, uh, I don't know if it's, when, when uh, what, could, you, could you help me understand the timeline of, of this particular request? Uh, we, we filed it in early April, and it'll probably run approximately a nine month proceeding with a decision to be effective January 1st, 2018. So there, okay. so, so there's, it's, it's very similar to the rate case. There's a, it's a formal proceeding. There's, um, we filed, we made our filing. There'll be a judge, there's hearings, there's interveners and um, testimony, the, the whole thing. It, sh it, it used to be part of the general rate case. It was just split out and done in a separate track. Okay, and, and, and really, I mean, this is, a, this is, I guess, a larger issue, and I don't know how that occurred, but all, the, this piecemeal approach to rate increases shouldn't be a thing, um, because you should be looking at everything. I, I mean, if I were a governing body, I'd, I'd, I'd feel it incumbent on, I don't know, my ethics to um, look at everything holistically rather than granting 65 cents here and $3 here and whatever here and whatever here and not actually looking at the totality of the impacts to a customer and to um, what's actually being done with it. So um, I appreciate you guys coming. I appreciate uh, you answering my questions. Um, I, I, I'd like to get more information from staff on, on what intervention looks like um, and potentially have that item um, at a future meeting. Um, but otherwise, look forward to uh, my colleague's statements. Thank you. Councilmember Weir. Thank you, Mayor. Good to see both of you again. Excuse me. I happen to be one of the council members that you did meet with, so you'll be happy to know I don't have any questions for you tonight. Um, but I did find some answers to some of the things I was asking you during our meeting. And, you know, this is really, it's, it's difficult, I think, from a non-utility um, person to look and grasp at how the utility operates. It's very difficult. It's very different from normal business. It, uh, it has many pots and many acronyms, many places. We've got to have funding from this and it goes to here and funding for that. And we've got buckets that we put it in and all that. It's, it's very difficult for um, people that are experiencing normal business activities. It's difficult to understand all that. But I'm getting a crack at it here. 
in the last year and a half or so, and I, I appreciate that. And I know that uh, you guys are here doing your job, and I want to tell you I appreciate uh, the response we've got from uh, the adjustment we made in our last franchise agreement with the communication. The communication is much better, and we understand what's going on a lot better. Uh, may not like it all the time, but we do. We do understand it, and the communication's uh, a lot better. But I wanted to look at maybe some different things than just what we're giving, so I went and looked at your 2016 annual summary report. And I realize that this deals with your company as a whole, not just the city of Bakersfield. And the parts I pulled out, it deals just with California. I found some interesting things in here, if I can find them again. I found it interesting that there's a chart listed in the annual summary report of the 20-year total return that an investor would earn on California water stock if you bought $100 worth of stock in 20 years ago, what the return is every year. And the return was kind of consistent until we got to drought years. In drought years, it dramatically rose. And in 2011, the return for that person would have been 206 bucks on his $100. In 2016, that return would have been 558 bucks, a 170% increase in five years. So I think your shareholders are getting adequately comp compensated. Uh, a couple other things that I, I noticed as I was going through here, and, and uh, this is a nice pre r piece, whoever put this together. I have them marked here. We are apparently, by a large margin, the biggest customer you have in California. Is that correct? I know that, that Bakersfield is our largest district. Right. Okay. So I went to your financial statement portion, and it showed eight years of financials. The drought basically started in 2011, so 2012 would have been the first results you would have had from that. In those five years, your, income, your, your operating revenue increased $107 million, a 20% increase over those five years. Your dividend payout, your return to your Investors, I mean, you earned a dollar, a dollar and one cent last year. You paid 68% of that out to your shareholders. You earned seven and a half percent on your on your stock or stockholders' equity last year. That varies from ten and a half down to uh, 7.1, which is 2015. That, in face of the fact that you actually sold less gallons of water. And so it, it's as hard as I've tried to understand, and I do understand a lot more than I used to, it's hard to sit here and think that you need more money to finance your infrastructure. It appears that you're operating uh, well, you're generating funds, your debt coverage is, you have, uh, you earn three and a half times what your debt coverage is. Um, it, it, things look pretty good. So it's hard for me to say, well, gosh, I can understand how they need this because your annual report, it, it, it doesn't display that. And I know there's a lot of things that go into this. I understand there's a lot of difficult calculations. But when I see a 20% increase in revenue in five years of drought, it, it gives me pause and it, it causes concerns for me. And while I understand that um, race, the, that the case is going to go through its, uh, its process, I, I personally feel that the city of Bakersfield should intervene in that. And I would like to take, make a motion that the city staff prepare whatever needs to be done 
to actually intervene in this case. It's nothing against you, gentlemen. I appreciate everything you're doing. I appreciate our conversations. I, I truly do. But on behalf of the taxpayers, on behalf of our constituents, I think we need to intervene. So, thank you. Councilmember Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, I want to compliment. I had a meeting with Mike and some others uh, talking about the relationship with, uh, you know, interaction with the city and forming those partnerships. And I really do think Cal Water is, uh, you know, really trying to um, put their best efforts forward. So I, I just want to thank you on that. Uh, I just want to capitalize on a couple of questions that Council Member Weir and Rivera made. Uh, during the tiered rates, uh, can you give me the, the rate of return or how much money did uh, Cal Water make on those tiered rates compared to what it would have been if it would have been a non-drought period? No, I can't. I, we could find that out for you, but I don't have that information with me. Can you give me a guess? Is it less? More? No, I, I can't. I, I'm sorry. I okay. Could, could I, you, I don't want it, but, but I yeah, definitely could, will get you the information. Could you provide that information to us, please? Certainly. Um, without that information, I, I really don't have any further questions at this point. But um, thank you so much. Kevin, did, did, you, did, you have, did you get that? Did you get his? Okay. Does he have an answer or? No, no, no. I just wanted to make sure he got your question so that we could look it up and get it to you. Okay. And he said, yes, he does. All right. Thank you. You have a motion? Please cast your vote. Motion is unanimously approved. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Uh, I'd just like to say. Thank you Thank for you, letting us to come present this to you, and I appreciate you listening. I, we, Cal Water wants to increase this dialogue, and we are more than happy to provide you whatever you need for part of the intervention in, in the cost of capital pre proceeding. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Under appointments, we have one appointment. Uh, to the Planning Commission due to the expiration of term of Oscar Rudnick, Ward 3, whose term expires April 30th, 2017. Applications for appointment have been received from Adam Cohen, Brady Bernhardt, Clarence Cryer, Houston Bursary, Jennifer Pitcher, Michael Caves, Oscar Rudnick, Scott Hansen, and Timothy Bergeron. Councilmember Weir. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to uh, nominate Oscar Rudnick to continue in his capacity. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your vote. Motion is approved. Madam Clerk, next item, please. We have another appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission due to the expiration of term of Brady Bernhardt, whose term expired March 30th, 2017. Applications for appointment have been received from Brady Bernhardt and Timothy Bergeron. We do have ballots and we will provide them to the Vice Mayor. As a city clerk provides ballots to the Council, I'd like to clarify the voting process for you. Although the council will use ballots, the outcome of the vote will be made public by the clerk. Based on these results, the council will then make the appropriate motion regarding each appointment. Following the council meeting, the individual ballots will be available for public review in the city clerk's office.
Mayor and Council, the results of the tabulation are five votes for Mr. Bernhardt and one vote for Mr. Bergeron. Thank you. Next item, please. Make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Vice Mayor. I would move to appoint uh, Brady Bernhardt to the Historic Preservation Commission. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Next item, please. Appointment of an alternate committee member to the Keep Bakersfield Beautiful Committee Ward 7 to fill a vacant position with a term to expire December 2018. An application for appointment has been received from Manpreet Kaur. Council Member Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Manpreet, could I have you stand real quick? Mempri Kaur is just an outstanding person within Ward 7. She's a graduate from UC San Diego. Uh, she's been actively involved in, uh, in just organizing things and helping the communities, specifically within Ward 7. Uh, she also is a great representative from the C community, and I'm just really happy to make her nomination as an alternate to KBB. Thank you so much, Mempri. Motion? Make a motion to approve Mampreet. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your vote. Motion is unanimously approved. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Consent calendar items 8A through 8X for approval. Vice Mayor Smith. Does any council member wish to recuse themselves from any items on the consent calendar? Does any council member wish to remove any item for separate consideration? Seeing none, I will make the motion to approve consent calendar items 8A through 8X. You have a motion. Please cast your vote. Motion is unanimously approved. Next item, please. Consent calendar public hearing items 9A and 9B for approval. It's now time for the consent calendar hearings. The purpose of the section is to vote on all of the items listed without, uh, under the consent calendar hearings in one motion without further comment. If anyone would like to speak on any of the hearing items listed, the item must be removed from this portion of the agenda. If an item is removed, it will be placed at the end of the regular public hearing portion of the meeting. At this time, I'll open consent calendar public hearing items 9A through 9B. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to request that a hearing item be removed from the consent calendar? If so, please come forward. This isn't the time to take testimony, only to remove the matter from the consent calendar hearing. Seeing none, does any council member wish to remove an item from the consent calendar hearing? At this time, consent calendar public hearings, items 9A through 9B are now closed. Vice Mayor Smith. Thank you, I'd like to make the motion to approve Consent calendar items 9A and 9B. You have a motion. Please cast your vote. Motion is unanimously approved. 
Thank you. Next item, please. Council and Mayor statements. Councilmember Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's glad to be back here with all of you. Uh, I miss you. I have uh, two, two items I'm curious about, um, if, if I could get an update from staff um, at some point or, or even in our, just as a part of our weekly packet. Um, and maybe, maybe I've missed this, but I'm curious where we, are, where we are with 24th Street with respect to actually digging, moving earth um, and beginning the project. Um, since the injunction was lifted. I, I'd love to get um, some more information about that. And I'm also curious um, about where we are with Hegeman flyover as well. Because um, I know we've talked about it, um, and I'm, I don't know how that fits into the current plans, but I'd like to get a status update on that as well. That is all I have. Have a good evening. Councilmember Gonzalez. Madam Mayor, thank you. I just wanted to catch Mr. Jimmy Soto, who's exiting the building, but wanted to recognize him tonight. He's the Executive Director of Independent Living Center, and tonight we adopted a resolution in support of AB 763, which will uh, help support and fund uh, additional, provide additional funding for the Independent Living Center. So, Mr. Soto, thank you for being here with us this evening. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank uh -huh. Councilmember Smith, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to comment on a couple of other things that we voted on. Uh, item N was a uh, extension for bicycle lanes uh, that we have grants for with the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District, and I think that uh, I appreciate staff working on those and, and look forward to the actual construction of those, making our streets safer for all users. And also on the uh, item 9B, the uh, General plan amendment for the West Beltway and the Class 1 bike path uh, south of Stockdale Highway. Again, I think future planning, uh, it's, it could be many years before we actually build that, but uh, it's good to think ahead and that's a great plan. So thank you, staff. That's all I have. Councilmember Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to remind everybody that this Saturday is the Great American Cleanup that Keep Bakersfield Beautiful is going to be act actively involved with. And uh, after everybody's done cleaning up, there's going to be a nice festivity and party at Yokitz Park. So I ho hope everybody can join. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing all of you uh, join 2,000 of us on Saturday with the Great American Cleanup. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Staff, thank you very much. And seeing no further business, we are adjourned at 6.43.
The 3.30 p.m. meeting of the Bakersfield City Council is now in session. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to call to order the 3.30 p.m. City Council meeting of April 19th, 2017. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Go. Here. Council Member or Vice Mayor Smith. I'm here. Council Member Rivera. Council Member Gonzalez. Here. Council Member Weir. Here. Council Member Sullivan. Council Member Parlier. Here. Thank you. Welcome, students. We have uh, several students here today. We have road runners. Would you raise your hand? Two in the back row. And then three gates. Is that right? Welcome. We're glad that you're here, and we always welcome you here. To uh, comply with the Brown Act, we'll receive public statements now. We ask you to limit your comments to the workshop item and the closed session item only at this time. All statements are given a three-minute time limit, 15 minutes per subject. Are there any public statements? Before we do any public statements, Mayor, I would like to announce that a staff memorandum has been received from the City Attorney requesting closed session item 4D be removed from the agenda. We have no public speakers this afternoon. Thank you. Next item, please. Under workshops, um, item A, 2017 Council Goals Adoption. Mr. Tandy. Honorable Mayor and members of City Council, this is the third time this item has appeared on your agenda. Agenda. Um, we have, I think, included all of the council-initiated requests uh, for inclusion, and so I guess we're here to have Caleb Blaski update you on those, see if anybody objects to any of the inclusions, or are there any additional items that council members wish to include? Um, but absent complications, we're ready to recommend adoption of the document after Caleb's presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of the Council. Um, this is a final presentation you have. Uh, over the last couple weeks, we received all of your comments and we added those to the goals document. Um, we don't have, we have no changes to goal number one, public safety. Number two, um, our transportation system council member, we uh, would like the goal added, work contractually and cooperatively with Caltrans to ensure that when trip projects are completed and ownership is given to Caltrans, the standard of maintenance care provided is such that it is a source of community pride. And there you have the morning drive interchange as well as um, the West Side Parkway. You have a couple photos there. And uh, Mr. Fiddler uh, is here to answer any further questions about that. Um, goal number three, downtown and major mixed development. Council Member Gonzalez uh, earlier added the goal um, to utilize resources and partnerships to increase the population to downtown, um, the downtown area by 10,000 residents by 2030. And that was a goal that he uh, brought forward a couple weeks before. Um, Council Member Smith, as part of the downtown visioning process that kind of occurred, and um, Ms. Kitchen here gave an update a couple weeks ago, that um, that vision document, they outlined several goals. And so Council Member Smith thought it would be uh, important to add those goals to the Council's documents since such great effort went to that. And so. Um, some of the goals that were added is the first was launch a property-based improvement district, otherwise known as a PBID. Um, the Downtown Business Development Center is actually act actively working on that right now. They've retained a couple consultants to further that, and so that should be brought to council in a couple months. Um, and so you'll be hearing more about that in the near future. Um, council members Gonzales and Smith activate downtown economic opportunity areas and explore additional tools. Um, implement an iconic and catalytic um, housing and mixed-use development project, adopt an overlay zone to support development along the Wall Street Alley area from D Street to the Mill Creek Linear Park, use vision plan as a platform for a future downtown land use plan, adopt a downtown walkability plan, 
and adopt a series of zoning updates that incentivize downtown redevelopment. So a lot of work is taking place in the downtown. We have a lot of momentum going there, so we're excited about the process, that progress that's being made. There's a couple pictures from the visioning document. Goal number five, strengthen and diversify our economic base. Councilmember Parley added the goal, promote further development at the Bakersfield Auto Mall by leveraging public-private partnerships, forming an economic opportunity area and increasing the aesthetics through public artwork and landscape improvements. And there you have a picture of the Auto Mall. It's quite large, so. Um, Councilmember Weir and Smith also had the goal of recognize that a proactive economic development promotion arm is needed in the City Community Development Department to facilitate increased investment and revitalization throughout the community, which will require additional staffing and organizational priority. And Councilmember Smith leveraged pub publicly owned parcels for economic development. And Councilmember Weir for goal number seven, fiscal solvency. Maintain constant awareness that unless pension cost increases under CalPERS are brought under control that effectively most other goals of the city will be difficult if not impossible to achieve. And uh, as stated before, there were no changes to goal number one and goal number six, um, community pride and image. So that concludes my report. Staff is here to answer any additional questions that the council members may have regarding the goals. Council Member Weir. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, just a couple questions on the on the property-based business improvement district. Could we get a little bit explanation of exactly exactly what that is? Um, I can uh, I can start, Council Member Weir and Jenny or. Uh, Jackie may want to jump in and add some detail. Uh, it is an alternate available to property owners under the law to do a self-assessment uh, to enhance the business environment of the area. Uh, and it is a process under which they, they need to reach certain benchmarks in terms of majority of property or assess valuation that is willing to self-assess and then they create a board uh, and identify the nature of the improvements they would like to see uh, at a point in time when they would have a preponderance or a majority of property owners signing a petition, it would come before the city council to uh, certify or verify um, that in light of the receipt of the petitions, uh, the council gives its blessing for it to appear uh, as a property tax assessment. It's been attempted two times in the last t 10 years or so. Um, and both times it fell short or was withdrawn. Uh, efforts have been made this time to um, I guess work harder uh, with the underlying property owners uh, in an effort to see that a, a majority of petitioning could come in in a positive manner. Okay. And uh, the downtown economic opportunity area, is that, that's just our general opportunity area that was rejected for the downtown area previously? There, yeah. Uh, yeah, we created six, I believe, um, and with uh, Council Member Parlier's request, I believe we would create a seventh. They exist, we're monitoring and tracking uh, what revenues, uh, alterations occur in their base, but so far it's inactive because of the decline in the oil economy and uh, the need to not uh, divert more general fund revenues. Okay. All right, thanks. Sorry, yes, I'm, I'll make a motion to approve. There's a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Under closed session, we have item A, we have conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, Letitia De La Rosa et al. versus City of Bakersfield. 
Item B, conference with legal counsel, potential litigation, one matter. Item C, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, North Kern Water Storage District et al. versus City of Bakersfield. And item D has been pulled from the agenda. Move to adjourn. We are adjourned to closed session. Students, just so you know, this is an annual process, the review of the goals that uh, we go through, and it's reviewed. We've had a number of sessions on it, and I think you can probably find last year's goals online just if you need that for class. This is our really short session, so you are welcome to come back for our 515 session if you want a full and rich experience of city government. Let's see you then. Thank you. City Attorney Gennaro. Uh, thank you, Mayor. On item 4A, staff was given direction. On item 4B, as in boy, and item 4C, there is no reportable action. And again, item 4D, as in dog, was pulled. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk, anything else? We are adjourned from the 3.30 meeting, and we will start the next meeting in just about three minutes.